evening, everyone. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, Tanisha. Nish. Minister Anderson. Yariel. Hey, Constance. Barbara Felicia. Hey, Barbara. <laughs> Diario. How are y'all? Hey, Nell. <clears throat> hey, Aunt Tanya. Rasheem, good evening. What's going on, brother? Hey, Coco. Hey, Coco. <laughs> Karan. <laughs> hey, Tanya and the Cessa. Kenyatta. Hey, Janine. Monica. And I, I ain't using no titles tonight. I'm calling everybody by their first name. Hey, Valerie. Hello. Hey, Cisco. What's going on, Cisco? <laughs> Brother Rodney, how are you, sir? Hey, Always. Hey, Kendra. Government name, right, Dolores? <laughs> Diaria, you can't hear. Can everybody else hear us? Hello, Michelle. Excited, yes. Hey, Tyke. Hey, Ernest, Ding Jet. So I don't know what's wrong with Diaria. Oh, you read the lips. Okay. Thank you. Thank y'all. Glad you could hear. Hey, cousin. Hey, ma. Wait to get back to church. Hey, Shaquinta. I mean, I'm excited about the lives, but ain't nothing like being in the church house where we can see each other, y'all. <coughs> where y'all can't just see us. Ready. tear that door down when we go back in <laughs> and take the carpet up <laughs> yes I'm excited Yolanda it's gonna be like a family reunion hey Brenda I know, TT. Ready, so ready, sis. I cannot wait. Hey, Belinda. Hello, 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 everybody. 
everyone. Welcome to the tower. Hallelujah. It's such a wonderful time to be in the house of the Lord. I know you're in your living room, but it's still the house of the Lord. Yes, it is. Because where two or three should gather, he should be in our midst. So as we shall agree as in touching, over, even over this live, we know that he's going to be in the midst with us today. Yes. And we're just so thankful, thankful, thankful that yes, you did not find it robbery to be a part of what the Lord is doing on this evening. Amen. I hope that you are ready. I hope that you are ready to receive a word from the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank y'all for inviting us to mm -hmm. into your living rooms, yes. your kitchens, your bedrooms, outside in your car, <laughs> wherever you're looking at us at. Thank you. We don't take it lightly because there's a lot of Bible studies going on and you could have tuned in to anyone, but you chose. The Holy Ghost led you to Strong Tower, and we are grateful. We're grateful for our members, but we are grateful for the visitors as well that would, you know, find it in their hearts to hear what thus says the Lord through Amen. this man and this woman oh, of God. God. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready? We ready. Hey, Wenda. Hello. And just for our first time viewers, or our first time visitors to our website, um, or those that are not members, just please remember, just go to our website, strongtowercm.org, if you desire to be a part of our ministry. I want to even know more about our ministry. Just please, once again, uh, go to our website, strongtowercm.org. And you can find out more about the ministry. We would love to hear from you and even find out how did you hear about our ministry. Yes. So we just thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of us, Amen. a part with us this evening. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing some people saying that they can't hear us. Make sure to check your volume because some are saying that they can hear us and some are saying that they cannot hear us. Can you hear us now? Can you hear us? Just give us an okay thumbs up, anything. Can you hear us well? You're going to wait a few minutes. Okay, okay, so, okay, you delete it now and start it back, and now you can hear. Okay, got gotcha, you. Good on Keitra. your end, Keitra. Good. Constance. Constance. So you're okay Amen. now, you can hear. Darren, you still can't hear? Everybody said okay. okay. All right, Amen. Uh, amen. D, check your um, check your volume, or, or go out and come back in to see if that'll that'll work. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to pray? You want me to pray? Yeah. All right, man. Let's uh, go right into uh, uh, prayer. Thank you, brother RB. I see you. Thank you. Y'all can hear us well. Amen. Well, let us pray, and then we will go into this word of God. Oh, gracious and wonderful God, we just thank you that this is the day that you have made, and thank we you, are going to rejoice in it. Thank you, Jesus. It is just the day that you have made. No matter what have gone on throughout the day, we yes. are going to just have joy in knowing that you are Abba Father. Thank you, Lord. Our Daddy God. The one that sits high and you look low. Thank you, Jesus. And you did not find it robbery to allow us to make it throughout the day yes, so yes. that we can come to this hour Thank to you, give you worship and to praise your holy name. Hallelujah. As always, God, we ask you that for everyone that is Thank on you, this live today, or on this broadcast, that Hallelujah. you will give them ears to hear what thus says the Lord, yes, Jesus. eyes to see it and a heart to receive it. You, and Jesus. now that they have received it in faith before the word even go forth, we declare right now that somebody will water it and God, you will bring the increase yes, over Lord. everything you have to say to these, your people. Yes, God. God, we ask you right now that there's someone out there that need healing. Yes, Father. Send your healing power right now. Hallelujah. In the name Send of it Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Do it like the satirian said. Hallelujah. God, you don't have to show up yourself. Just send the word. God, send there's it, God. someone out there right now that need a word from you. Yes, and Jesus. we just ask you right now in the name of Jesus just to send the word yes, Father. for their situation. Yes, now God, yes. for your man and your woman servant, we just ask you to that your Holy Spirit will increase in this place like yes, never before. God. Hallelujah. Because when your Holy Spirit increase, like, like the glory cloud falling Thank in you, the Lord. sanctuary or in the temple, we can only do what thus says the Lord yes. and not what we want to do. Thank you, so God, 
hide us behind the cross. Hallelujah. Bring back to our remembrance everything that you have given unto us. Yes, Lord. And let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, Thank our you, strength and our redeemer. Amen. And we'll be careful to give you all honor and praise in Jesus' in name Jesus we pray. Name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So before we even get started, I just want to make a few announcements. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Number one, don't forget about our Destiny Land Children's Church. Please, please, please make sure you tune in or get your child registered to be a part of our ministry. Yes. Um, they would do activities. They sent out an activity today around about 3 p.m. And then they would be on Sunday at 5 p.m. on live. And we will have possibly either Intercession Janine or one of our ministers giving an encouraging word to them. So please, please, please tune in to our Destiny Land Children Church. The reason why it's Destiny Land, because we're not playing around like it's Disney Land. We have a Destiny Land that we want to send our children to. And when they understand that there's a Destiny Land, they understand that there's a Destiny Man, and his name is Jesus. Yes, we want to send them to the Destiny Man while we're teaching them that you are you're on your way to the destiny land. So Hallelujah. God, we just thank you for our children's thank ministry you, God. and those ministers that are part of it. And we just want to give them glory, give them honor and, and truly support what they are doing. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Something else that we have in the making that will take place on Sunday, mm -hmm. our very own uh, intercessor Janine and a few of her partners uh, we're going to feed or provide dinner. I don't want to use the word feed. We're going to provide dinner for the first responders in the emergency room at McLeod Hospital. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a part of it, you want to donate to it, just uh, go to our website, strongtower.cm.org, and in the given, put other and put in there first responders. Regardless, we're going to uh, feed our first responders in the emergency room at McLeod because we want to say thank you to them yes. for the hard work that they are doing. Yes. If you have any questions or you want to know more information, please inbox Sister Janine and she will definitely give you more information. But we at Strong Tower, we're going to be a part of truly just supporting our first responders. There's so many other people out there that we need to support also, but we're going to do that for Saturday at lunchtime. I'm sorry, Saturday for lunch and not Sunday, Saturday for lunch. And Hallelujah. if you want to be a, be a blessing, no amount is too small. Yes. Just, just, if you want to be a blessing and so into, um, the first responders, go through our website or sister Janine and, and she'll direct you, but just like I said, no amount is too small. Just whatever you can sell. If it's a dollar, it's a dollar more than what Amen. they had. Amen. And we just want to be a blessing to them. Uh, and I say again, it's Saturday lunchtime. Saturday lunchtime. Hallelujah. Saturday at lunchtime. Saturday at lunchtime. Saturday lunchtime. Yeah, not not Sunday. Sunday. Saturday. Saturday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready for the word? Well, we are ready for the word also. Hallelujah. Ready. Hallelujah. Well, if you have your Bibles, let's get started. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. I want to read this scripture, and then if you allow me to build my our case from there, build and then case. we should get uh, airborne and then prepare for landing. 2 Corinthians, the ninth verse. Second verse. I'm at the ninth chapter, the eighth, eighth verse. verse. Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter, eighth verse. verse. The ninth chapter, the eighth verse. Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and the eighth verse. This is the only scripture I'm going to read for the start. This is Bible study, so we're going to walk through the Bible a little bit. But I'm going to read it out of the New King James Version of the Bible. And it's, it's kind of, it's going to build on where we left off at, um, on Sunday. Or a portion of it that God revealed to me from Sunday that just to dig into. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here we go. It reads, 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter and the eighth verse. And it reads this, this way. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may 
have any abundance and may have an abundance of every good work. Can I say that again? I want to just read that one more time. Read it one more time. And it says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance of every good work. Can I read it in the CEV? Amen. I'm going to read it in the CEV version just to break it down a little bit more for you. God can bless you with everything you need and you will always have more than enough to do all kinds of good things for others. You might want to read that again. I'm going to read it again. <laughs> God can bless you with everything you need. And you will always have more than enough to do all kinds of good things for others. We are blessed to be a blessing. Some people get blessed and they want to hold on to it. That is not how you get enough. For, that's not why you get enough for others. It's not for you to tuck away, but to be a blessing to others. Amen. So the title for this evening, and I, I, I just heard this, so I'm going to change it just a little bit. Wearing grace. Mm. Wearing grace. Wearing grace. Yes, wearing grace. Now, how did this come about? If you just allow me just to back up so we can move forward. On Sunday, we talked from Matthew, the 22nd chapter, and we were talking about the wedding banquet mm -hmm. whereby the father was inviting people in and they never would come in. Yes. They all had an excuse. Matter of fact, they even injured some of the messengers and killed some of the yep. messengers that even invited them in. And the father went on and said, go to the highways and go get anyone. And they said they brought in good and bad mm -hmm. and the banquet was full. Yes. However, there was a man in there that was not dressed in what we call the wedding garment. Mm. And he said, why aren't you dressed in that wedding garment? And we understood from our teaching on Sunday that we called that person a bold rebellion or he was, he was called somebody that is bold in rebellion and stupid stubbornness. Mm, 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 mm. He was bold with his rebellion. Or he was just stupid in his stubbornness. But, but the revelation in that, because they went out and bought in good and, and bad, bad mm -hmm. people to come to the wedding, to the banquet. Mm -hmm. They bought in both, but he was only concerned about the one that was not dressed in yes. the proper garment. In the proper in the proper, proper garment. garment. That's the this is where this wearing grace come in. And if I had to put a, a subtitle, wearing grace apply in favor. Mm. Wearing grace and applying favor. My Lord. Meaning when you have grace on you, wherever you go, God would apply favor to it. Mm. The reason why this is coming out so when you think about this marriage or this marriage banquet, it was full. Mm -hmm. But the father only focused in on the one person that wasn't clothed right. I don't want to focus just on him. I want to focus on everybody else. Mm -hmm. Because they wasn't point, pointed out because or pulled out because they wasn't dressed right. right. But because they were dressed right, they was in the grace of God. My Lord. They were not cast out. Because of the grace that was on them. In other words, they were wearing the right garments, which is grace. Grace, my Lord. If you're in the right place and you're wearing the correct garments. Jesus. In other words, you deserve to be there. The Bible teaches us, and I'm going to try. Wearing try. <laughs> grace. He was not clothed in grace. He was not clothed in grace. We're not talking mm. about this right here. We discussed that on, on Sunday. He was not clothed with grace. No, this is where I'm trying to stay on course, but I'm going to just go ahead and allow the Holy Ghost to move me and to move us in the way that Lord, we should go. Lord, have mercy. How, how, well, Pastor, why do you say he was clothed in grace or they were clothed in grace? Because we are saved by grace. 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 Oh my God, that's even deeper. We, we are, are saved, saved by, by 
grace. grace. And he was he was at the wedding banquet without grace. He was without grace. But he had it on rebellion. The Bible says he was uh they call he called it rebellion, bold rebellion. Mm-hmm. Bold rebellion. That's bo- that's that's blatant rebellion. Mm-hmm. That's just outright rebellion. rebellion. No regard rebellion. Or stubbornness. Stubborn. Ooh. When, they you, go got, ahead when you have the instructions, mm-hmm. you know the direction, yes. and you know what everybody else is doing. They never said they were clones. He just said, did you have on the wedding garment? Garment. That means you have, they may have had the right, and this is just in the Holy Ghost as I see it, you could have wore your favorite color, Mm -hmm. your favorite design, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. as long as it is the right garment. Listen, we are saved by grace, but the grace that all of us have is is fit for our body. Kent, Kent, Lord have mercy. You know what the Bible says rebellion is? As witchcraft. Mm-hmm. So all, but with all the good people and all the bad people that were there, they still had grace. Mm-hmm. He came in with a witchcraft spirit. Yes. Think about this then. When some people are rebellious mm-hmm. on their side, mm-hmm. so they make mm-hmm. a lot of noise because... They want to be in the limelight to bring people on their side. They all this this little saying: the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Mm-hmm. I'll say mm-hmm. this: mm-hmm. the person that makes the most noise get the news headline. Mm. <laughs> if you make a no, lot of noise, they're gonna catch that. People, <laughs> <laughs> people will talk. Yes. You know, we we have some people do it on social media because this is a scripture or because this is that they won't post this or they won't they won't forward this however they want to say it. But I tell you, when there's something negative going on, Mm -hmm. it spreads very quickly. Yes, it does. In other words, a stubborn and rebellious person does. They do not want to fall in line because sheep fall in line. Goats, but everything. (laughs) <laughs> meaning every time something goes on but but Mm-mm-mm. but i would go to church but those hypocritical people well there it is you but everything you are the hypocrite because you go to some places where a bunch of sinners and hypocrites are and you continue to go there and give your money and have nothing in return but when it comes to church where people are who are not perfect we are ha- we have the goats there that are but everything because they don't want to do it now this is something else and i just feel this sheep will fall in line yes so will rams will fall in line mm-hmm. cuz it's a a ram is it's only a, a male, male sheep. sheep, but a goat oh. is different. Now, me and uh, a good friend of ours, the uh, um, Pastor Vincent mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, out of uh, Virginia, we had this great talk. And he said, he brought it up about being a ram man, mm-hmm. a righteous, anointed man. Mm, so he said, you got to be ram tough, righteous, anointed man. And man mean human when you think of, but it's his man's group. But we talked about and had this understanding. What? Sheep walk. Yeah, you know, God had a ram in a bush, not he a had, goat. He had a ram in the bush. <laughs> now, this is the revelation when people say, well, how can you tell the difference between a ram and a goat? Well, this is uh, the goat. Number one, when a ram fights, the ram may raise up. Mm-hmm. But what he do is he put all four of his feet back on the ground so that he will have energy and power to move what's in front of him. Mm. A goat will stand close to you and his power is he'll raise up and he just drop his head down on you. Watch people who will get close enough to you just to drop their thinking on you. Oh, 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 but God oh, oh. people may, ra- may rise up, but they come back down so that they understand if I go down, I will have the power to move what is in front of me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So a ram and a goat have some similarities, but they don't fight the same. It's always you can, like that. You cannot fight like a goat when you're a ram. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. In other words, you can't fight like the world when you're a child of God. That's right. 
Cannot. As much as you would like to. Mm-hmm. As much as that situation would m- want you to act like a goat, you mm-hmm. still got to be a sheep or a ram. Yes. And sometimes you just an old goat. <laughs> but this is the thing. Goats are necessary too. They are. Mm-hmm. They are. They are goats are necessary too. So... Let's look at this thing of wearing grace. Let, 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 let me uh, define this word grace. We, we use this, this definition quite often. It's wearing God's grace. unmerited favor. It's God's unmerited favor, meaning that it's something that we did not earn. Right. We could not have purchased it. Mm-hmm. We, we did not buy it. We didn't earn it. There's nothing we did to get God's grace. Right. To receive God's grace. Right. So there's an acronym that, that we use sometimes for grace. Mm-hmm. The G is God is G-R-A-C-E, you know grace, but it's God's riches at Christ's expense. expense. Meaning that we got it at Christ's expense. Yep. He paid for it. He paid for it. Now, this is the thing about wearing grace, and it's right here in this next one. Grace also carries this understanding. It is the power. And the and and the equipment for ministry mm. to oh. have grace on you. That means you have the power and equipment to minister. Lord have mercy. Many people, Jesus, are not operating the way they're supposed to operate because they are not a grace for the power Lord and have the mercy. equipment. Lord Jesus. Lord in mercy. other words, people are not doing what God has chosen or called them to do. And that's why they find their self stress, stressing, struggling, straining, frustrated, and just plain hard to get along with. Mm-hmm. When you're mm-hmm. that person, when, when nobody, when everything is stressed out, everything seems like it's struggling, everything seems like it's straining, you're frustrated with everybody and you, and nobody can get along with you. Maybe you're not wearing grace. grace. Lord have mercy. You remember our bishop told us this. If you are are, are are mad or struggling, how did he put it? If you're if if you're mad about what you're doing now, you're doing it wrong. Yes. yes. He said if you if you're having two, I mean, listen, hard times come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you're just so if it's so hard what you're doing, then maybe you don't have the grace for it. Mm, mm, How, what do you mean by that, Pastor? There are some people that took a job not because God graced you for it, because you needed money to pay your bills. You go to work every day. You don't like it. You go in stressed, strange, frustrated, and just playing hard to get along with, not because you've been graced for that job. You're in need of finances to help you live. Yes. It's not even in your uh, uh, your degree field, but you wanted to do it anyway. Yes. You just wanted to go along to get along. What you are not graceful would take you out. Yes. It'll take you out of that position. It'll take you out of your 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 peace of mind. What you are not graced for will stress you, will frustrate you, will upset you. You'll be it can take you into a depressed place if you're not graceful what you're doing. You're, you're, It'll make you want to quit. Mm-hmm. Me and uh Minister Folks had this conversation today. <laughs> That's what it was. Bishop said, if you want to quit, you ain't, you're not doing it right. Mm-mm. If you want to quit, you're not doing it right. Yep. If you quit. If you quit, you, you're not you, doing it you right. You wasn't doing it right. Mm-mm. Not if, if you want to quit because all of us already or, been someplace that we wanted to quit. Or if, yeah, but if you are not graced for something, you will not stay, with, you will not stay there. You Mm-mm. will not stay in it. Because you can go through the, the most aggravating things, but your spirit won't let you leave because you can feel the grace on you to keep going. But if you are not grace for it, it will cause you more heartache and frustration than anything. Yes. Yes. You have to be grace for it. Yes. Now, can I just help someone out there? You're in a place that you don't know that you were grace to be in. You wonder how did you get there, but everything is going your way, but it wasn't your plan. God may have sent you to a land that you don't even know about, but because you operated in grace and left, 
He has you in a place that you're not qualified for. You didn't even look for. You don't, you're not even uh, uh, have the degree planned for. But grace have put you in a place that this unknown land has blessed you. Mm, that's good. I'm, I'm trying to stay on course because when you have grace, you have applied favor no matter where you go. No matter where you go. That's good. Let, let, let me use this right here and, and slow this plane down, slow it down while we're going upward. We are saved by grace. Mm -hmm. That means grace is not something, it's someone. Mm. Grace is not something, it is someone. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. It is someone. That's why the Bible teaches us, for by grace ye are saved, through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of of God. Yes. And because we use this term all the time, it was by the grace of God I made it. Mm -hmm. by the it was grace by of the God. grace of God I didn't walk out. Mm -hmm. It was by the grace of God I hung in there. It, we use that. But literally, it is wearing grace. Yes. You have to be graceful a lot of things. We walk in things blindly, blindly. and realize we ain't grace for that. Mm -hmm. And now, for somebody, you may be operating in mercy. And you're still there surviving and not knowing that you're clothed in grace. Yes. Well, you think you're clothed in grace, but you're really clothed in mercy. Because mm -hmm. mm. just as well as favor go with grace, mercy goes with it also. Lord have mercy. Because we understand this. Grace is when you receive what you did not earn or you deserve. Mercy is when you do not receive what you do deserve. Mm. <laughs> So some of us are operating in grace and mercy. He's still blessing us even though we don't deserve it. Yeah. Even though we deserve something worse. Mm -hmm. And he put us in that place. But when you operate in grace, and this is why I went back to the text in Matthew 22, is because if you're in the marriage, mm -hmm. you can be clothed in grace. Mm -hmm. And you have favor because you're in the presence and in the place of the right people. Jesus. And you're not stubborn and you're not rebellious in the right place and in the presence of the right people. So you get to eat in the wedding banquet and you get to socialize and sit at the feet of the king. Yes. Let me change it. Of the father. Of the father. Of the father. So let's listen at this. <laughs> because of grace, we are in right standings, mm -hmm. meaning that we we are in the right place with God. Mm -hmm. So it breaks down like this when we say grace is someone and not something. Right. So grace, so listen to this. Jesus is the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus is also the salvation of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus is also the faith of God. Mm -hmm. So we are saved by grace into salvation and we are saved only through faith. So Jesus is the gift of God. Mm -hmm. So everything we need is in the package of Jesus Christ. That's good. My grace is in there. My favor is in there. My salvation, salvation is, is in, in there, there. And so much more is in there. So what we need to do, we need to learn more about the Jesus that God gave us than learning more about ourselves. Lord. Let me put it this way. If we learn more about the package that has everything in it, the, gift. the whole gift of it, yes. the whole package of Jesus yes. Christ, we will learn that we have grace, favor, salvation, All sanctification. We have everything. Matter of fact, we even have sonship in there. Mm. If we learn more about the total gift. gift. My God. That is awesome. The total gift. Everything will get is it. in there. Yes. Yes. Everything we need is in Jesus. Everything we need is, is in, in Jesus. Jesus. Mm, can I even add this thing? Go ahead. Everything you desire is in Jesus. Mm, everything. Is in Jesus. Not in your flesh. It's in Jesus. If I'm in Jesus, he know my desires and he know if it's good or bad yeah. for me. Your healing is in Jesus. Yes. Your peace is in Jesus. Your joy is in Jesus. Your everything, every you name it, and it is in there. Yes, yes, yes. Everything we need is in 
Jesus. And we always looking in ourselves to find something that's only in Jesus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's only in Jesus. <laughs> it's only in Jesus. Only. So when people see grace on you, some people will send that into jealousy and envy. Y'all want him to benedict us now or you want us to go a little bit longer? <laughs> oh, God, people, say that again. When people see your grace, they identify it as jealousy or, or envy of you. But how about this? When you wear grace, God gives you his favor and they don't know how to identify God's favor and they put it in the category of jealousy or envy so they talk about you not knowing they are identifying the favor that has been extended because of the grace you wore when you were invited in to the wedding banquet and you came in humble without stubbornness or even rebellion you wore what the the father say to wear, and now because you're in the right place, you get to eat off of his table. And when you <sighs> eat off of his table, you become stronger, and then you move into favor because the father never gives his son a stone when he needs fish mm. or bread. Listen, People are jealous of what is on you, what you're wearing. And I'm not talking about your clothes. Mm -hmm. When you're wearing grace, mm -hmm. when you're wearing favor, they cannot comprehend with their natural minds who you are or whose you are yes. and everything you have because you know you found that everything is in Jesus, but they're looking at you like you think you're better than them. Or you got more than them. They want to covet what they actually can have. Yes. 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 And, and this is the thing. When you are wearing grace, God will cover his grace with anything that will bring him glory. Mm -mm, y'all God covered your <laughs> covered you with a job because you walked in wearing grace oh, and because you God. are wearing grace you have favor because God is able we are able come on because God is able we, we are, are able. able and that means we have favor because God Jesus is favor Lord have mercy he is favor he is favor he is the favor of God Jesus is the favor of God Jesus is. <laughs> Not us. Not Jesus us. Is. Yes. Because when, G when God looks at us, he looks at us through the blood of Jesus Christ and the blood says you have favor. <laughs> can he see you through the blood? And can you identify your favor? I love what our Apostle Holcomb, uh, uh, Nathaniel Holcomb said about this. He said this and we, we're going to declare this. I'm going to say it slow. He said it this way. He said, when you wake up, you need to get up. Mm. And when you get up, you need to go up. And how do you go up? By going down in worship. And when you go down in worship, you'll, you'll be up in the world. Mm, mm, I'm going to say mm, it again. Mm. When you wake up, you need to get up. When you get up, you need to go up. And how do you go up? By going down in worship. And when you go down in worship, it, it allows you to be up in an upside down world. My God. Mm. That's so good. Man, that man was profound. Ah, that's you. so good. So what does it mean? It means when you are clothed in grace, you can apply favor or it can be applicable wherever you are or where you are going. Or it can even be known to people you know. And those you don't know. Right. It can be applicable wherever you are or you go to everyone you know and those you don't know. Oh, Lord. When you are clothed in grace, when man, you... everywhere you go, the favor of God is with you. Is so with how you. do you apply your favor? Man, you don't have to do nothing. Everywhere you go, everywhere you're at, Everybody that you know and those that don't even know those you will be you. able to see that God has applied favor upon your life because you are clothed in grace. Lord have mercy. Lord have because mercy. Because you are clothed in grace. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. 
Go ahead. Mm, 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 so mm. let me let me break down our our starting text. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. I'm going to break it down for you okay. real quick so that uh, you'll be able to understand this portion. <laughs> the grace of God that allows me to apply favor wherever I go to whoever I know and even those I don't. When 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, it begins like this. It says, and God is able. That's the might of your grace, mm -hmm. that God is able. That's it. The might of your grace, and let me put it this, in your favor is that God is able. We are able because God is able. God is That's able. the might of it. Lord and he Jesus. said to make all grace. That's the manner of it. Mm -hmm. Because he's able, he can make all grace. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> He can make all grace. And then it goes on to say, a bound towards you, that is the motion of the grace. Mm. Oh, towards me. I can, I can back that up. And God is able, and that's the might of it. Mm -hmm. To make all grace, that's the, the manner, manner of it. it. And then when he say, a bound towards you, that's put your name there. That's, that's the, the motion, motion of it. it. That means the might and the manner and with this motion is going towards you. you. Lord have mercy. Can't you just shout right there? <laughs> you can just give them glory right there. That's the motion of the grace. And then it concludes with this. He said that ye always have an all sufficiency and all things may abound to every good work. That's that the is the ministry of it. When God gives you a motion of grace, mm -hmm. he's wanting you to use it for the ministry of it. Wow. Some people say always, how do you do this? How do you do this? It's not out of strength. It's not out of our own might. No. We understand it's through the spirit of grace yes. that God allow us to be here to do this. Yes, Lord, Listen, have mercy. We're talking about pastoring right now, yes. but there are some people that have the gift of administration. You only have that. You are able to do it because grace gave you the power and it gave you the equipment to be in the place that you're in. Mm -hmm. It, I, You can put any type of uh, uh, occupation there or what you do. If you are a beautician, you have the grace to do it. That's it, the gift that you give back. That's the gift that, the, the gift that you give back. Mm -hmm. Because he gave you grace, he said, can I get it back from yes. you? There's grace on your gift. There's grace on your gift. Because if ain't no grace on it. There, can I use this for an example? There are a lot of uh, gifted singers. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that can sing, but they do not have the grace that their voice will give them favor in places where people with less talent have arrived to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you walk in with your gift and your gift is arrogant, your gift is stub stubborn, it's prideful, it's rebellious oh, because you one. want to use your gift the way you want to use it. Then it goes back to Matthew 22. Lord, they ask mercy. the question about your gift and you are speechless about it. So they end up throwing you out. Mm -hmm. Now, let me go ahead and help somebody this way. There, I, pray, uh, uh, I pray that it doesn't, have to, it doesn't happen, but I know it, sometimes it does. That there are people that have to be removed from church. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're a hellion, so mm -hmm. you have to be removed from church. But many people walk out because their gift is under a prideful, rebellious, stubborn spirit. And they use these words. And it's not always for everyone, but we use this word. That church do not know how to use my gift. The reason why the church can't use the gift, because maybe your gift is stubborn. It's selfish. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're the one that's holding the gift. That's the gift. It's stubborn and selfish because any gift that ha that that needs to be used got to be submitted. And pruned. And pruned. And that's whether it's at church or on a job. You can come to a job with the greatest gift. Mm -hmm. But if that gift is not submitted under the authority, the direction, and the instructions of that job, you won't be there. You will not. 
You can't come in and tell someone how to use the gift in their establishment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every gift has to be submitted. Every gift. If it's not submitted, it's rebellion. It's rebellion. Now, this is so powerful. While you was talking, I thought about this. And you know, we traveled all over the world in the military. Mm -hmm. And no matter, the military is universal, mm -hmm. as in there are certain things that we understand. But every duty station, you don't change your job, you change your location, but every location does it a different way. Mm -hmm. When you go into a place because you know the job, but you don't know the pattern or the forms and right. the fashion of that unit, right. you will be in rebellion because you don't want to change because where you came from, you're trying to force it into the place where you are going. Yes. And I don't care how good you are at yes. what you do. It Every still has there. to be worked into the place that you are going. That's even in when you get a, a promotion, mm -hmm. you can't take that gift that you use at one level and use it at the next. You get There's a, a greater uh, uh, a requirement. There's mm -hmm. a greater responsibility. Mm -hmm. So you got and, and a, a, a gift that is not submitted, that's a rebellious gift, you can nobody can use that. And then you turned away, then you'll turn the right way and say, They they don't like me. Yes. They don't know how to use my gift. They don't gift. know how to use my gift. But a And it's not yeah. yours. It's never yours. And then this is the thing, babe. Your gift will make room for you. Yes, it will. It will make room for you. You don't have to make room for it. Mm-mm. It'll make room for you. Mm -hmm. However, there are so many people that do not know how to allow their faith in the ministry to, and their patient to come along with it so God can build the foreground for yes. them. Let me prove, can I prove that point? That everything, your gift and your grace has to grow. Mm -hmm. Prove your point. Prove, prove my point. I'm Thank you, baby. Let me prove my Please point. Prove I'm going to prove my point. Here we go. Luke, the second chapter. Luke, the second chapter. And I'm going to read the 41st and the 52nd verse. And this is Jesus. He's talking about Jesus. This is Jesus they're describing. And it said in the 40th verse, Luke, the second, hold up, Luke, the second chapter. Let me turn. I got my notes, but I want to make sure I'm right. Luke, the second chapter and the, I said I wrote 41, but I think uh, it's 40th verse, the 40th verse. The 40th verse, Luke, the second chapter and the 40th verse. And it reads, now hear me this grace and favor starts with our author and our finisher. Yes. That means it began with him. Yes. And it's going to end with him. Certainly. Mm -hmm. He's going to finish. Yes. It. So is. look at this text. It says, Luke, the gospel, of Luke, the second chapter, the 40th verse, it said, and the child that talking about Jesus grew and became strong in spirit filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Mm. So with the grace, you got to have the spirit and you need wisdom. Can I, can I read it in the CEV? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Luke 2, the, Luke, the second chapter, the 40th verse that he just read. The child Jesus grew. He became strong and wise, and God, God blessed, blessed him. <laughs> Grace. Strong and wise. Yes. And then God blessed him. And then him. God blessed him. I, I, I know there are a lot of people out there working out and they go to the gym. But the first time you get under a weight that is too heavy, mm -hmm. you need a spotter. Mm -hmm. But the more you work it and become strong and you become wise that I don't need to be up on the hip by myself until I'm strong enough to do it and I have a spotter. You become stronger, you become wiser, and then you are blessed yes. by what you are accomplishing. Yes. Many people will not stay in a church long enough to get strong and to get wise in the word. And then when you run out, you don't get blessed. You just run in the mess. Yes, yes, yes. Because you ha and getting the strengthening is where people leave at. Mm -hmm. Even in a gym. To get stronger, you got to go against what you uh, are comfortable with. Yes. So it makes you want to quit. But in order to be blessed with what you are trying to achieve, 
You have to keep lifting what makes you uncomfortable until you get to that place that you desire. Yes. Or where God is going to bless you. Mm -hmm. Now, this is so powerful when I just was thinking about this. Jesus didn't need to be strong and he didn't need to be wise. He's the wisest man yes, ever. Yes, he is. However, his gifting was in a child body. Oh, y'all heard that? Everything we need has been blown into us since the beginning of since time. Since the beginning of time. Your gifting or what people need to see need mm. to grow on the outside, which causes the things on the inside to grow. Lord. <laughs> God did not need, y'all hear me, and I'm not trying to throw <sighs> anything out there, but as I look, and it said, God does a natural thing and a spiritual thing. He said, first the natural, then the spiritual. Even Jesus showing us that he grew yes. in the spirit and in wisdom, but he was the word in flesh. Yes. yes. We are reading about what he wrote, mm -hmm. and he's walking it out before they wrote it. Listen to verse 52 of that, same, of that same text. It says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. <sighs> can, I, can I eat something you said just really got me? Go ahead. Because God blew wisdom <laughs> mm -hmm. into us. Mm -hmm. He blew everything we needed into us. Mm -hmm. But it had to, we had to get mature in order to operate in it, in order to use it. Mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. did not, he was not, well, he didn't walk this earth very long, but he had the wisdom, the maturity of an old <laughs> man. He's the ancient of time. And, and so it's not about your age. Mm -hmm. It's about your submission in order, as you're submitting yourself to God in order to handle what he's already blown into you. Yes. I, People tell us all the time, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. you know, because we're, we're younger than a lot of people in our uh, congregation and we're younger than a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. But the <laughs> wisdom yes. that comes only from submitting yourself to God to, mm -hmm. so that he can mature this thing in you to lead somebody. Let me tell you, can I be transparent for about a second, two or three seconds? I look at my husband all the time and he looks at me and I was like, baby, we got a church. Yep. And I look at him. I said, and not just that we got a church because a lot of people got a church, but people are following us. But people, on, people, you're only following what we have submitted ourselves to in order to get the wisdom that exceeds our age. Mm -hmm. Somebody better catch that. Your age don't matter. Your submission matters. Yes. If you want God to blow more grace and more favor, then you have to submit yourself more. And that's when you walk around and people can really see, Lord, something is on you. And that's why in verse 40, it says, <laughs> when he was a child, when I was a child, I, I thought, thought as, as a, a child. child, I act as a child. But when I put away my childish ways, mm. I put away my toys. The, uh, the the toys of us things, the toys are us things, and I started being a man. My and the only reason you don't play with toys is because you have grown in your spirit, you've grown in your wisdom, and in your stature. And then this text said at the end, you will find favor in God and man. Can I just help somebody? Please When help you somebody. have grace on your life, not only God is pleased, your enemies have to favor you. They get, oh, my Lord. Those and are, do you know that your enemies can tell you are, who you are before you know who you are sometimes? Mm -hmm. They will let you know, but we get angry when they tell us because they don't tell us the way that we want to hear. Some people say, I just don't like you. Well, what is it? I didn't do anything to you. Must be the favor on my life. Yes. And this is another thing that gets me. Don't stop saying favor ain't fair. It is fair because you've submitted yourself. Mm -hmm. To God to get that favor. It's fair. Mm -hmm. It's just. And fair. fair. It's just. That's good. It's, it's just, just fair. fair. <laughs> so it. so let's let's stop pe when people say favor ain't fair. It's just fair. Mm -hmm. Just. It's just and it's fair. Because he's a just God 
and he will give favor to whom he desires. So it is a just, fair thing. Listen, your grace is fair. Mm -hmm. Your mercy, Lord have mercy. We be begging for mercy. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's fair. It's let me, just let, fair. Let me show you how, how, how grace and favor can operate. If y'all okay. just let me walk through these scriptures right here. Because many times we, we read through it, but we really don't understand it. Help us. Joseph. Mm -hmm. was clothed in grace. Mm. Oh, let me help somebody now. I'm going to just move a little forward. Just because somebody put it on, well, so, just because somebody ripped it off don't mean you ain't carrying the grace. Mm. We understand that when Joseph was a child, his father made him a cloak or a garment of many colors. And when he was already talking about Lord. the grace God has on his life in visions and dreams, everybody in his house did not like him. His very own brothers did not like him because they could understand what the father in the natural did not totally understand that the father up above our heavenly father was doing, but he was making it natural before we can read it now for our spiritual benefit. Lord have mercy. His father said that he knew that, that his son was special. He was a special yep. son because it was the son of the old age. But mm -hmm. this is the revelation of a difference. He only made a coat of many colors for him. Yes. So when, when, when his brothers seen him coming, they called him the dreamer. Jealousy. Jealousy. When they called him a dreamer. When, when people cannot understand your vision, sometimes you shouldn't even tell them. Your vision, your dreams may be too big for those even in your household. Yes. Let me to help some people out. Even in the household of faith, you can't tell everybody your dreams. Can't dream. tell everybody. Because when you see what God has shown you down the road and you try to bring people down the road with you, some people will jump off because the vision is too big for them. Yes. So here we are, the brothers looking at him. Or they don't like what God has placed them. Mm. in the vision yes but that's when you want they we want to be something more than we're graced for mm -hmm. joseph was graced to be there mm -hmm. and it kept going and we know the story and I, I just just how when he came they were going to kill him because he had a dream he was a visionary yes Many people want to kill off somebody that is a visionary. Why are you doing that? It don't take all that. Why we got to do this? That's a goat mentality. Mm -hmm. You just want to butt everybody's vision and you don't want to see anything come. But look what they did. They took his clothes, his, co his coat of many colors, not knowing when they ripped it, they opened something up. Lord have oh, mercy. I don't want me to preach now, but I'm going to stay calm. <laughs> When they ripped open this coat, when they ripped it apart, they didn't understand what they opened up. I cannot just walk through this pages just for help a little us, bit. Help us, help us. When Jesus' body was ripped apart, when he was being, being beaten by the Roman soldiers, something started preparing to open up. When his body was hung on the cross, and we know that the cross was when he, when he tried to stand, the pressure on his feet would make it agony. When he dropped down to relieve the pressure off his feet, his arms would possibly come out the sockets and it would suffocate him. But we said when it was all over, there was another ripping from the top of the veil to the bottom of the veil and something opened up to give access. The brothers didn't understand the coat of many colors was ripped to give access for something they did not even know that was coming down the line. You may have went through a ripping process or a pruning process because you are, about, you are opening up something to prepare somebody for what is coming down the road. Lord have mercy. You may be the only blessing that for the famine that is on the way for somebody you love. My God. There's somebody you love and your past ripping, your past pruning is the thing that is going to get you in the place to help them through this famine. Right. Listen. Oh, go ahead. No, you're good. Okay, you're I'm good. good. Yeah, Listen at good. this. There's the brother, Benjamin, who didn't want him to die. Right. So they put him in the hole. Y'all know the story. And then some, sold, some people came by and they sold him to him for 40 pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. When they sold him for 40 pieces of silver, he went into Potter's first house. Mm -hmm. And in Genesis chapter 39, and it's around the second through the fourth verse, it reads this way. 
And the Lord was with Joseph, mm -hmm. and he was a prosperous man. Mm -hmm. And he was in the house of his master's master, the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. Yes. That's called grace. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hands. That's called favor. And verse four <laughs> says, and Joseph found grace. Come on, author and finisher in his sight. In grace or favor in the sight of God and man, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put into his hands. My, 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 my. The ripping caused him to be in grace and favor in the sight of God and man, because he did not murmur or complain. He was in the place, under instructions, yes. dressed in the right thing. Dressed in the right thing. Even though they took what they thought they took, they couldn't possess what he had. That is so good. <laughs> they stole something, but they thought they had something, but they could not possess what he had. People can hurt your feelings, mm. rip your clothes, physically, mentally, or however, but they cannot take your grace nor can they take your favor. People can persecute you and call you all kinds of names. They can slander you. They can mm. come for your character. Yes. They can make you try and look bad in front of everybody, but they cannot take your favor, nor can they take your grace. Can I say this? When you are favored and in so much, when you are clothed in the grace of God and the favor is upon your life, it'll cause people to want to um, get close to you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, hear me in the Holy Ghost. First of all, I'm not talking about close that the anointing draws because that's what the grace and the favor of God mm -hmm. do. The favor of God will draw people to we'll you. Draw. Well, listen, it, the favor on Joseph's life was so strong, it drew Potiphar's wife to him. Oh, Potiphar's wife. It Potiphar's would even draw, you know, when the light is strong, it even draw bugs. Yes, Lord. When the light is strong, you can see where you're going, but it also attract bugs. Or in other words, it attract insects. So you better have some discernment while you walking around as, a, as, a, as anointed as we are with all this favor on our lives because it will draw the wrong thing. It would draw Listen. insects. Listen. Mm -hmm. Oh my, I got another, we got another teaching because you better make sure that you have no kind of lust, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh and, and the a pride, pride of, of life. life. Yes. When you are anointed, when you're carrying favor, because you're going to have to know what to accept and what not to accept. And listen, because people going to oh. lie on you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You good. People going to lie on you on you to try to make you or, 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 or tempt you to try to make you take the wrong thing. Mm. Before you take the wrong thing, leave something else behind. Joseph left that coat behind with his brothers. Leave some when, evidence. When Potiphar <laughs> wife wanted to be the insect, y'all understand. You know what she wanted to she do. She wanted to do. She wanted him to lie with her before he did that, and he even said, I can't do this to my Lord. He gave me He gave me favor. Yes. So when God gives you favor, you don't want to disappoint the one that gave you the favor. No. That's why when God bless you with a job, don't put the job before him because everything will start to go wrong. If he bless you with a good job, <clears throat> make sure you... Follow what the Lord has given you and don't pollute it. Come on. When the things, when she wanted him to pollute it. Yep. He said, I wasn't going to do it. And when mm -hmm. she grabbed him, he left the coat. Yes, he did. Behind. Yes, he did. That was the did. second time he left something so that it would move him into another area or level. It, yes. He left yes. his coat of many colors. He left the coat with Potiphar's wife, and y'all already know what it is. Even though they had evidence that he died, that was just a tracking mechanism to show where he went, where, where he, he been. Uh-huh, where he's been. Sometimes you left some things behind so people can trace where, where God brought you from. Yes. Mm. Oh, man. There are some things left behind in your life so that people can trace where God brought you from. Yes. And sometimes with like Joseph, sometimes you know what? When the wrong thing comes for you, you gotta run. Yes. Even I don't care 
you know, you've ever been tempted to do something thinking that nobody will know? Mm. Have you ever accepted or, or, or let, let me see, how can I put this? We have to be careful what we accept sometimes because it can turn into a curse. Mm -hmm. What looks like a blessing or looks like it's going to benefit you will end up cursing you and you will lose everything you got because you have accepted something that's not good. Listen, I hear you. Mm. I'm trying to tap all around. I, listen, listen. <laughs> you can accept something that is that will help your flesh, yes. but it will stop your destiny. Yes. You That's good. will accept something that will please your flesh, flesh but, but it will, will stop, stop your, your destiny. destiny. And before your destiny is stopped, leave something that you don't need. Yes. Walk away. Run and, away. Yes. Just run away. Yes, yes, yes. Especially when you are, when the Holy Ghost tell you it ain't right. And can I, listen, and then the people that you, that God are use the things that God are using so people can trace you, they'll try to use it against you. Yes, they will. They'll bring up your past, if you want to put it that way. Why did you say that? Because she used the coat once she seen that it was left in her, her bed chambers, yes. in her chambers. Yes. She lied on him to yes. the men and to her husband, so they threw him in prison. Yes. Mm. So but your gift will make room for will you. Will make room <laughs> for you. That gift will save your life. Mm -hmm. That gift will speak when it is needed. Can I say this too? He sh I'm just talking from a man's point of view. If somebody would have said that, Many men would have had him killed. They would have they would have got rid of him. But Grace was on his life. He only got locked up. That's it. He got locked up. And sometimes we believe I'm not talking about behind steel and concrete. Many of us got out of a situation and the situation didn't seem beneficial for you, but God had to lock you up. So that you will be prepared for your next blessing. Lord have mercy. And in your lockup, you still was favored and had free reign. <sighs> Come Cause, on. Because in verse, in same Genesis, now 21 and 39 through 41, it said, And the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, um, for as much, oh, I'm sorry, I done went too far. Uh, let me go backwards. Mm -hmm. Before all of that, Joseph had favor with the, the guards in the prison. Yes. And he had a butler and a uh, 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 baker. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> the butler and the baker. He prophesied to them and they got out. Well, yeah. one got one was killed three days later. The other one got out and he told asked them, don't forget about me. Right. Even in his so-called lockup, mm -hmm. he still was operating in his, his gift. gift. That gift will do you right when it's submitted. Mm-hmm. I like what somebody put on there. You had to be locked up for your next level grace. Next level grace. I listen. love that. I love that, Diario. Next level grace. Listen. Now listen, after all of that, he forgot about them. And you can't get mad because somebody's not talking about you, but they didn't forget about you. Right. God will make a situation arise so they will remember you. Mm -hmm. And then the butler remembered him when the Pharaoh was talking about his dream. Long story short... The Pharaoh, he went to the Pharaoh, he prophesied to the Pharaoh, mm -hmm. everything was going on. And this is where we're at in this text, chapter 41 of Genesis, the 39th and the, through the 41st verse. It says, and the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has shown thee all this, talking about his dream, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Come on, that's the equipment and the power. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be over my house, and accordingly unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will be, only in the throne will I be greater than you. This is Pharaoh saying, out of every place else, mm -hmm. the only place, the one place you're not going to be greater is in the throne where I sit. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. It's like Adam and, when Adam and Eve was in the garden. You can have everything except this. As long as Joseph understood that grace made him second seat, but not second best, right? he was all right. right. And we have people on here right now, you got to understand, just because you are an assistant, it don't make you second best, you're just in the second chair. Lord have mercy. Me and Bishop, I had a Bishop, um, um, Will Boyd Jr., we had this under, uh, discussion about our plane. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And when it takes off, when it lands. And I, I, I was making this understanding that there are three pilots usually in the, in the cockpit of a plane. Mm -hmm. All of them, where they have an aviator and two pilots, a pilot and a co-pilot. Mm -hmm. All of them can see what is happening when it's coming down, um, when the plane is on glide path and on course to land. But all of them cannot do the same job. Mm -hmm. Each one of them got to do their own job so that every the plane will land with the cargo they're carrying. Right. What am I saying? All of us can be in the same area, but each one of us have to do our assigned job so what we carrying will reach its destination and everything will be safe. My Lord. The problem with many people, you can we do not like sitting in our seat because we don't believe we get the credit. Here is Joseph. He's in charge of everything except the Pharaoh mm -hmm. when he's mm -hmm. on the throne. Mm -hmm. And he gave him his insignia. Yes. So that's your power of attorney to act as the Pharaoh. Right. And we know the story, what goes on after that. The favor and the, the grace and the favor was over his life to the point where the grace and the favor that somebody could not see mm -hmm. when he was a child with vision, they had to come to him and he still could have been like some of us nasty to his brothers, but then he wept and said, you meant it for evil, but God's grace, I'm just adding that, that ain't, but God's good. grace <laughs> and his favor turned it out for our good. I'm just going to pause right there and just let somebody know there's going to be some people, and that's for us too, baby. Mm -hmm. There are about to be some people that will walk back into your life that have ripped the clothes off of you and put you in a hole. Mm -hmm. But they're going to return to you because God has put grace and favor on you and they don't even know they're returning back to you. Now you're going to have the opportunity. Go ahead. I was going to say grace and favor makes you respond righteous. Yes. Oh, good. Grace and favor makes you respond righteous. Yeah. But there are going to be some people that are about to return back into the place that you are in favor, grace and favor with God. Mm -hmm. Now, don't lose your position because you want to be <laughs> prideful. And you got every reason to be prideful. You got a reason to go off. You got a reason for to act every way that your flesh wants to act. But you don't have a right to. You don't have a right. Here is Joseph. He's talking to his brothers, and his brothers don't even know they're talking to him. Mm -mm. Don't even know it. But when he had the opportunity, he seen he had to he had to, in other words, find out if his father was still alive and his brother. Mm -hmm. the, and when we say his his brother from his mother, mm -hmm. and when he seen him, his whole heart went out. Mm -hmm. And then he says who he was, and he identified himself. Mm -hmm. Listen, God can yep. put so much grace and favor over your life. People that knew you when you was a child cannot identify you when you're in your blessed place. The ones that talked about you, that tried to have you thrown in prison, <laughs> the one that wanted to bury you, the one that, that yes. wanted to discredit your vision, the one that said that you are just a dreamer, this ain't going to come to pass. Those are the ones that won't even identify you when God has put his favor and his grace on your life. Listen. And this is those what, people. Yes, those people. Your family, your friends, and your foes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and even your fears. And your fears. Let ooh. Yes, even your fears. You know, because you got folks that will mock your vision. They will mock the things that God has shown you. They will mock who you are when you decide that you don't want to be like them anymore and do what they do. They will mock you. But those very same people are gonna need your prayers. And they're going to want to hear that vision again mm -hmm. because they're going to need that vision in order to survive, in order to get an understanding. And the grace that's on our life, the favor that's on your life, on all of our lives will allow us to do exactly what God intends for us to do, even in the hurt of how they have done you. You know you got grace. And you know you got favor when those that have talked about you, the ones that have blatantly hurt you and did all kinds of things to try to destroy or bury you, 
You know you got favor when you cry out to the Lord for them, when you mm-hmm. pray for them, when you offer them help in spite of how they yes. treated you. Yes. This is so powerful because after all of that, when we look at it, and I want to jump to the New Testament and make what your point so profound. And I'm not going to read it all, but you can find it in the Gospel of Luke, uh, the 40, basically the 40 through the 40, 48th verse. Mm-hmm. And it talks about when Jesus was saying, telling his disciples, if in other words, the faithful steward. Mm-hmm. And he said, when he comes back, will he find you doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing? Mm. Now, this is the revelation of a difference. Mm, mm, mm. After all you went through, God will get you to a point, and the bottom of the text said, too much is given, much is required. This is why you can't use your past to pad your present. He gave you so much in your presence, in the present place you're in. He said, because I gave you that now, more is required of you. Mm-hmm. So much is required of you, you can't be stubborn. You can't be prideful. You can't be uh, 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 a rebellious spirit. You can't even be revengeful. My God. When he give you more than you started off with, because much is given, much is required. If Joseph Mm -hmm. did not have that revelation of a difference in him, like some of us, we would have treated our loved ones wrong. You said something. And we want to do that because we want vengeance. Mm -hmm. We want to get vengeance. But the Bible says vengeance belongs to God and he will repay. Mm -hmm. He will repay. He will repay. Mm -hmm. All that. You know, you got you want the favor of God on your life for real and you want grace on your life. Do what we got to do, what we're called to do and not act like people uh, treat us. If you're going to ask God for more, he's going to require more. Yes. Listen, that doesn't um, fall just under the category of time. He's going to he's going to require more out of your character. Yes. You don't want to be the one coming to the <laughs> wedding banquet and he say you you, you got to go cuz you ain't dressed right. Yes. How, but but go ahead. But <laughs> you you ain't dressed right. Yeah, I saw what they did to you. Yes, I see how they treated you. I know how they lied on you. I know how they stole from you. I know how they tried to destroy your character. I know how they talked about you. But you're not dressed right. You're here, but you're not dressed right. Even they have, though they have done everything to you, you have still got to be clothed yes, yes, right yes, and yes. not with oh, rebellion. My, my, my. Not, and many times you won't come in the right garment because you want to be seen. Mm. To prove to people, I made it. Oh, I made it without you. I'm preaching my own story here. <laughs> I made it without you. Mm-hmm. I want you to see that I made it. Mm-hmm. But God said, I gave you all of that and I require more of you. Can I, you said it best. He required more humility now that you have more. Yes. Humility will help our church. Mm. If we have the humility to carry the grace, the humility to understand who the favor comes from, who the favor comes from, who favor is, we will be able to move even to a greater place. Can I just go ahead and start bringing this down to a close? Yeah, we got to land. Yeah, yeah, we got to start landing. (laughs) I've just got some scriptures for you to prove that when you are wearing grace, you can apply favor where you are where you're going, to those that know you and those who don't even know Mm -hmm. you. Here it is. Acts 2 and 47 says it this way. You may just write them down. I'm going to read it kind of quickly. Acts 2 and 47 says this. Praise God and having favor with all the people. This is the church. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. When you are under the grace and under the favor of God, God will even add to your church. Now, you don't think I'm just talking about Strong Tower. No, I'm talking about your home. God has a way to add to your first church, which is your home. If you are clothed in grace, knowing that grace bring about favor, and because of favor, he's going to require even more of you. Mm, 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 Proverbs 3 says it this way. Proverbs 3, and I'm going to read the fourth verse, and I'm going to read the ninth verse. It says this. In the fourth verse, it says, And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Mm-hmm. 
God would allow you to find favor and, and esteem in the sight of God and man, mm -hmm. grace and favor. And y'all know the rest of it, trust in the Lord with all your heart. But when you get down to verse nine, it say, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all your increase. Let me go ahead and pause this right here. When he says with all your possession is not considered your money, you need to honor the Lord with your faith. Lord have mercy. And then with the first fruit of your increase. The first fruit deals with your money, but he said, honor God with your possession, which is your faith. When I have Jesus, I got faith. Yes, yes. Because everything this, is in the package. Oh, everything Lord. is in the gift. Yes. I will honor him with, with my, my possession. God, I didn't possess God. He possessed me, but we are ownership by partnership and I will honor him through Jesus, yes. which will cause me because he gave me so much. Lord, I'm Lord. required to give him the first fruit. I have no choice but to bring the first fruit to him. There's no argument. There's no debate. There's no questioning that I must bring him the first fruit because I'm going to honor him in my faith. Listen. Mm. And you have to have faith to do the next thing. Mm -hmm. You got to have faith to give the tenth. The first fruit. The first fruit. You, your faith is your currency in heaven. The Bible says that it is impossible. That means it's not possible. There's no way in the world that you can please God without giving him your possessions, your faith. Yes. There is no way. There is everything is I like I like how we started. Everything is wrapped up in Jesus. Yes, it is. If you don't if we don't have Jesus, we don't have anything. We don't have salvation. We don't have freedom. We don't have healing. We don't have wealth. We don't have anything if we don't have Jesus. People are really walking around here faking it. Like they got something. You don't have Jesus, you really don't have it. Hallelujah. Let, let me, let's go to line. Okay, we're going to land. I, I looked at the clock we're and we're, we're, we're going over our time. Can I say this? How do you know you're in the grace and favor of God? In Psalms 41, and I'm just going to read this one passage, okay. Psalms 41 and 11. I want you to turn to this. Psalms 41 and 11. Psalms 41 and 11. It says this, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version of the Bible. It says this, by this, I know that you are well pleased with me because my enemies does not triumph over me. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you Listen know, to... I want to read this in another version. You need to pull that up in another. What, what version? What version? I'm, I'm reading in New King James, okay. Psalms 41 and 11. Psalms 41 and 11. And by I... this, by this, I know you are well pleased with me. By this, God, by knowing that I am close, by, by doing what thus says, I know you favor me because my enemies did not triumph over me. Lord have mercy. They didn't take me over. Listen. Go ahead. You go. <laughs> they did not. And listen, you will leave your enemies baffled with that right there. Let me see. 41 and 11. Yes. I'm going to read this in one of our favorite versions. C-E-V. Then my enemies won't defeat me, and I will know that you really care. That's it. Mm -hmm. My enemies will not defeat me. And, and I, I will know, know that you really care. Lord oh, have Lord. mercy. He's the Alpha and Omega. Yes. He's the beginning and he's the author and the finisher of our faith. So I want to go back to our very beginning scripture. And we are really going to close. I think that's our third one. And I always get three. And I'm going to read Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 out of the Amplified. And it reads this way. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessings come in abundance to you. So that you may always, under all circumstances, Lord have mercy. regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being complete, self-sufficient in him and have an abundance of every good work 
an act of charity. I just want you all to know this evening. Lord have mercy. Wear grace. And when you're wearing grace, you have the ability to, to apply, uh, be, uh, apply favor in everywhere you go, everywhere you're at, to those that know you and those who don't know you. Because the favor of God is over your life. Because you're clothed in grace. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallel Wear your grace mm. and do it in humility. When you get up tomorrow, go up. When you when you wake up, get up. When you get up, go okay. up. How do you go up? By going down in, in worship. worship. And when you go down in worship, you'll be up. In an upside down world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we always give in this house, and I want to give you the opportunity to give also. We know we all we do, we've been doing what we always done, which is give. If you want to give into the ministry or plant a seed, as always, if you're on RAM, you already know what you need to do. But if you are visiting with us and you want to sow, uh, go to our website, strongtowercm.org, and click on the realm giving. And it will take you through how you can give into this ministry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Strong Tower, for doing what you have already always done, yes. which is give. But I want to say a special thank you to those that are not a member of Strong Tower yes. that have sown into this ministry. We see you. We're praying over your seed. And we know that God is going to increase you. Yes. We declare that, it is, that this is good ground. Thank you for trusting this ground to even sow into. We do not take that lightly. Yes. We don't. We we appreciate you. We we pray for you. And, and after this is over, after we come out of this secret place, because we're not in quarantine, we're in the secret place for this download. And we just declare that we will be able to love on you in person, that you will come and visit the ministry and let us love on you. Let us pray for you. Let us lay our hands on you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And if you look on the screen, you can text your giving to 73256. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray and we're going to get out of here. Um, I would say forgive me for going long, but the Holy Ghost has arrested us and we are here. And we like to stay within an hour, but I see that we went over time. But I just <laughs> want you to know... You are clothed in grace and God favors you. So yes. let us pray. Thank you, O oh gracious God, for first of all, for those that have sown seeds into this ministry. Yes, Lord. Those that are members and those that are friends of this ministry Thank and you, those Father. that just trust you, God, and knowing that there was such a yearning in their spirit to give into this house that is named after you. Yes. So God, we thank you that thank you, you will continue to give seed to the sower yes, and you will increase their harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now, God, there is someone maybe on this line that don't know you as their Lord and Savior. God, allow them to confess you with their mouth and believe in, you, in their heart that you are the Son of God and you was raised on the third day for that justification. God, we thank you for the for the prodigal son or the prodigal child that made his way back to the father. We understand that you are forever married to the backslider. And because we return back to the father, we receive everything that belongs to the father. Yes. We don't want your hand, God. We're looking for your heart. And we thank, thank you, you that you expose and show us your heart. Yes, God, Lord. we thank you for those that desire prayer. Answer every prayer that is in need this evening, yes, God, for Lord. those that have already prayed towards you and to you through Jesus' name. Yes. Last but not least, God, even over the live, even though we can't come into the four walls, plant each person into a body, yes, Lord. a Bible-based church, Jesus. God, that Thank they you, will Lord. be in the kingdom of God, not yes. by name. But by the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah, we're not. We don't Jesus. care about the name on the wall. We care about the name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes, God. So God, we declare right now that each and every person we planted in a place that they will continue to grow in the knowledge of You. Hallelujah. And God, we won't take it back. We'll just add more to it. We truly do love You to life. But God, we thank You that You thank love you. us even the more. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in we Jesus pray. Name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. God bless you, and God we will you. see you on Sunday. Amen.